All right, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Dr. Yuzo. Uh, this is ECE 360, our 10th lecture. Uh, first of all, can you guys hear me and also being able to see my screen here? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, too. All right, let's start. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, under my dog cam, uh, I'm showing the previous example uh, two, number two even a first order system transfer function and uh, looking for the specific specifications uh, which are three time constants right tc is the time constants tr is the rising time ts is the settling time right we have three different definitions respectively so according to which we're going to come up with the uh, uh time moments value but before those uh, equations uh, first of all the basic idea is we are looking for the output right we are looking for the output time response so the output is equals to the input times the system transfer function okay always true this is something always true because this is a definition of the uh, transfer function and the f excuse me and the further the input is defined as unit step be very careful, okay? What is the input specifically? Not necessarily one or rest all the time, okay? Not necessarily, okay? And times the uh, system transfer function. And then what you need to do is the partial fraction. First order system, the partial fraction won't be very difficult, okay? It won't be very difficult. So you can easily come up with the partial fraction result and then apply the inverse Laplace transform by using the given table we can have the time domain output expression C of T from which we derive the initial value and the final value, okay? Initial value and the final value. And based on which we go ahead, the time constant equals to the time moment at where the output Reach the 63% of the raise up by 63 of the uh, steady state value, which is the final value as well. So 63% times two, you come up with the time moment here. So in the equation, you're solving what well, the exponential uh, function, right? And a known TC is in the in the uh, what is called the uh, exponential function here. Okay, so you're solving the TC value. It turned out to be 20 milliseconds. Okay. And then the rising time, you need to, to find two time moments. And the difference between them is the rising time. One is 10%, another is 90%. I'm right? not surprised that 10% time moment is lower than TC. 90% time moment is higher than TC. Okay. And difference between 90 to 10% is the rising time, T sub R. Okay. And we left uh, the very last one, TS, for you guys to come back home to do exercise. Anyone got the uh, TS value? Anyone? Anyone did it? Uh, I got 0 0.078 seconds. Uh, very good, very good. It's, it's 78 milliseconds. Good job, Sawyer. 78 milliseconds. So how he got there is like this. I'm following the same idea. When, when time is at the settling high moment, what happened is your Output is reaching 98% of the final steady state value. Well, this is just the equation then, right? Just the equation. And then what do we have is two minus two times e to the negative 50 ts equals to two times 98%. And then we got ts equals to 
78 millisecond. Okay. Nothing but following the uh, definition. Nothing but following the definition. But one thing I want to emphasize is coming back to the uh, three uh, calculation here. What we find here are actually we sample the TC. So you're using 63% times the final value. But essentially, be careful. This this meaning is 63% times the difference between the final value and the initial value. And of course, we realize that the initial value is zero. That's why it's two. Essentially, is two minus zero. Same thing here. Okay, same thing here. Okay, and the, to this one, same thing as well. This guy is C infinity minus C of zero. Your percentage means means what? The percentage of the difference between the initial and the final value, not the final value itself. I don't know if this makes sense. Now, of course, in this particular example, the initial value is zero. That's why it's directly you're, you're using the percentage times the uh, final steady state value. Of course, it works. Okay. However, if the initial value is not zero, you cannot easily do this. You cannot easily do this. Okay. You have to involve the initial value, initial value here. So any questions before we uh, go through an example including non-zero initial value? Any questions? All right, if this is fine, I think it's straightforward enough uh, by by a couple of examples, you guys should be should be good. Should be good. Like I said, let's go over one problem with non-zero initial value. Uh, before we are seeing the given system transfer function, can anyone imagine? Of course, you have to imagine or guess uh, what kind of uh, first order system transfer function can give you well, with the unit step response or, or step response, what kind of system transfer function can give you non-zero initial value? Can anyone imagine or guess? What kind of? Something doing with temperature, maybe? Yes. No, I mean, just mathematically, mathematically, not physically, uh, practically, just mathematically in this first order system transfer function, in what scenario you will end up with a non-zero initial value? And practically, yes, you have many uh, real examples. Initial value is not zero. Well, that's, that's almost everywhere. However, mathematically, what kind of a transfer function can give you non-zero initial value? Anyone imagine? Um, when it's connected to a battery and then disconnected. Once a, no, once again, it's just a mathematical model. See, in, in terms of the transfer function, just think of the transfer function, not a practical real exam, a, a real example. No, it's mathematically. Can anyone imagine? Non-zero initial value. Or let me ask you this. Transfer function like this, you definitely come up with zero initial value. Okay. It's for sure. Okay. However, if you have something like this, your initial value won't be zero anymore. So what does it mean by this? What do you have? A differential equation. 
uh, well, just look at the transfer function. Just don't go too far. What's the difference between this transfer function and the example two transfer function? What, what What's the difference between this two? What's the difference? Uh, Anyone can de zero. describe the difference? Oh, very good, zero, very good, zero. Very good, John is right. This transfer function has what? No zero. This one has what? Zero of what? 90, 100. The first order system, of course, you might have zero. Okay. Not necessarily the, the numerator as a constant. Of course, not numerator, not, not necessary. And once again, why it is called the uh, first order system? Why? What is determining the order of the system? Um, because the um, poles uh, that R in the system is only raised to the uh, first power. S is only raised to the first power. Yes, basically he's right. So your denominator here is a first order polynomial of S. Be careful. We are talking about the. Uh, we are talking about the system transfer function. Okay, not output, because if you're looking looking at the output, output is like this. This is this is what second order. Does it make sense? The denominator is second order as polynomial. However, we are not talking about that. We are talking about first order system or any other order system up to the system transfer function, okay? not output. Be very careful. Okay? These are these are two both are uh, first order system because the system transfer function. As what first order as polynomial as a denominator, or say only has one pole, only has one pole in the denominator, okay, and only has one pole, or only has one root in the denominator. Okay, this is how we describe the uh, system order. Okay, you, this concept must be very clear. Okay, it must be clear. Okay, all right, go back to this example three. With a zero of ninety one hundred, you will see you're gonna have different scenario. Let's go over this problem. So first of all, as they did in example two, uh, what we need to find first step, of course. Okay, I need to finish the problem. Find once again T C T R and T S. Nothing new. Of unit step response. Once again, the problem has to the problem has to specify a particular input. Okay, without in, this information, you're not able to find anything about output. Okay, no input, no specified input. You don't know the output. Okay, remember this. All right, let's go ahead. So, what we should do first to solve this problem, according to what we learned from example two, what we need to do. No, we need to use the inverse, or we need to do the inverse Laplace too. Uh, yep, to find the output, right? To find the output, of course. Even before that, we need to have this. So uh, I just got a quick question. I, Is I it quick? You were mentioning <laughs> that um, the CS equals RS times GS. Mm -hmm. Once we multiply that by an example two, that became a second order. So when you're asking us to figure out what order differential equation, we'll always default to the transfer function's order, not the output function. Absolutely. I, I guess I'm kind of wondering because because um would they ever ask you or would you ever ask us in a test to find the the order of the output transfer no 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 i won't do that no okay no no one should actually because when asking 
the order or say the uh, or say just the order, asking an order, asking the system order. Your output, your output order is up to your system and the input. However, input, what is the input? There is no specified input. This input is something out of control. There's no point to talk about it. So, so let's say our, our polls for the first or for the second example was S plus 50 and then a double poll of S plus 10, which is squared if it's a double poll. Since there's, mm -hmm. it would be three S's, that would be a third order differential equation in terms of the transfer function, the gain. Correct. Function, correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. So basically there's the, the gain transfer function and then there's the output transfer function, but we all. Only... No, 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 no. You can't say output transfer function. Output is a signal. It's not a transfer function. Transfer function is transfer function. Signal is signal. There are two categories. Okay. okay. In the system, well, today, uh, later today, we're going to also review the uh, midterm one in where uh, I'm going to repeat talking about the uh, block diagram, the, the, the generic block diagram, including many compositions and the transfer functions, signals, some injunctions, and the PCAL points. I know those are kind of four categories. And uh, no, uh, not uh, not everyone is clear about th those things. Okay, so I, I, maybe you're gonna go over that, but not now. Okay. Well, and once again, you're talking about output. You're talking about output, which is a signal. It's not transfer function. You can't say output transfer function. What is that? No, system transfer function. Okay, you're talking about a system systems transfer function. Okay, a signal okay. is signal. So transfer function is transfer function. Okay. And okay. these are two different things. Okay. Yeah. Those two are completely separate because then the yes. system transfer function, depending on that differential uh, order, would be determined based on the signal we're introducing RS, right? For, for yes. Being unit step or, okay. Got it. Right. right, your output output is up to the system transfer function and the, the input. This is a, this is a signal times the system transfer function equals to output signal, all right? So this guy has order, has order easy. These two, no. Okay. Okay. System transfer function and the order of it, okay, here. Which given the order, yes. So what? You see? Well, remaining first order system because of the system transfer function here. All right? So here we are applying partial fraction for there. Uh, skipping the middle step, we end up with this. Okay, this is the partial fraction result. From here, we apply the inverse Laplace transfer. And end up with this. Okay, this is what we did in example two as well. All right, so now here is very, very important to check initial value. And of course, the final status value as well. All right, and if you substitute T here as zero, and then you end up with initial value of one, you see none zero. And you substitute t here by infinity, you end up with two as the final steady state value. Non-zero initial value.
And in your head, you need to have a virilized graph. Okay. Because we previously discussed the uh, for first order system output looks like this, right? It's uh, starting from somewhere and then raise up to steady state value after a while. Similar look here. However, what's the difference? The difference is the initial value, right? This is a two, this is one. So you're not starting from zero. Instead, you're starting from a non zero and then end up with at the steady state value. So this is the. Uh, the curve look like this is the curve look like right this is the difference between these two right the difference between these two and therefore now we start to find the three time moments first time constant time constant means what when t is equals to time constant what do you got Right. As said, you need to involve the uh, initial value into the equation. Right. The difference between them, basically, you risk you start from here. Right. You raise up by sixty three percent of from here to here. Right. So it's, it's about here. Right. This is the moment for T C. Does it make sense? So this is this equals to what? Two minus one times sixty-three percent. Does it make sense? So look at this equation. Any questions? Because uh, anyone can tell this equation is not right yet. Okay, this equation is not right yet. Can anyone tell what's the what's the mistake here? I'm gonna write write the uh, correction by red color. Can anyone tell why this equation is not right yet? Or how to correct it? Anyone can tell? Speak out, Alex. Don't you have to add the initial value back? Oh, very good, very good, very good, very good. Very good. Why is that, folks? Why is that? I said the here, this part is meaning what? Meaning you raise from here up to here. However, your value here is not equal to this. You need to add the initial value one, right? Right. The function here, the value is not is is not two minus one times sixty three percent. You need to still add up the initial value here. Does it make sense? So you have to have here. Okay. You have to have here. Right. Remember this. Remember this, otherwise your result won't be right. Your result won't be right. All right, based on this equation, what you have is two minus e to the negative 50 TC is equals to two minus one times 63% plus one. Here we go. And then you got TC value. And then you got TC value. Is 0 0.02 seconds. Take a look to see any questions. If no questions, give you guys 
three minutes to find out TR and then come back, we together gonna find a TS. Go ahead, you need some exercise on TR. Go ahead for TR, three minutes. All right, so let's see the uh, TR. First, to find the ten uh, percent, and followed by ninety percent time moment, right? So C equals T equals to ten percent, and equals to C infinity minus C of zero. 10%, and then once again, don't forget the initial value, otherwise your equation won't be right. Negative 50t. Of course, here again is 10% time moment. Anyone got this t? T10%?
correct. Two is right. Yes, uh, two millisecond. Correct. Similarly, you have T equals to T 90% following the same thing. Zero times 90%. And then you got T 90% equals to forty six milliseconds. And eventually your TR equals to 90% minus T 10% equals to 44 millisecond. Don't miss those two uh, initial values, and then you should be fine. The settling time is when it reached to settling moment, what you have is this. And then follow the same idea. And then you're gonna come up with this settling time of 78 millisecond. Okay, that's it for this problem. That's it for this problem. So first of all, any questions regarding this problem? Any questions? All right, if no questions, then comparing the example three results with example two, what do you find? Any finding between example three and the example two? They're like the same. They're not like the same. They're exactly the same, right? Exactly the same. And then why they're exactly the same? So we just studied the uh, example three curves is like this, beginning from one and then reach to two, right? And then example two was what? Beginning from what? Zero, right? Reach to two as well. Right. So what does it mean is this TC is equal to this TC. So we should say example two and three have the same transient. Different or different initial value. Initial values. And uh, the point is this transient. The transient, why is they have same transient? Same poles, same pole, same system, 
system transfer function pole. Same system transfer function pole. So one thing you want to uh, establish, one concept you want to establish from now on is the system transfer function. Once again, again, system transfer function. We're not talking about a signal input. We're not talking about a signal output either. We're talking about a system itself, which is independent of input. Okay, input is out of our control, so we never put it into a picture. Okay, we just study the system itself. By studying the system, we come up with the model, which is a transfer function. And by watching that transfer function, we see what poles are. Okay. And those poles are going to determine the system performance. Transit. Okay. Determine the system uh, transit performance. This is a very important concept. Okay, this is a very, very important concept here. Okay. System transfer function poles determining the performance of the transient of the system. Okay. No matter what is the input, it doesn't matter. And it's out of our control as well. Okay. Any questions? All right, no questions. We move on to the next one. Number one was the first order system, and uh, number two is the second order system. Let's learn the second order system. Second order system. Generic transfer function looks like this. Okay. What we are seeing here uh, are actually, first of all, a constant gain k, constant, a constant, uh, what is called Greek letter, the epsilon, and omega n. All of these are constant. And from the order of the denominator as polynomial, you can tell this is what? Second order. Okay. And this is what? System transfer function. Okay. Independent from the given input, we don't know what is input. And we are not studying the output yet either. Okay. The, just the system transfer function itself is a second order because the second order as polynomial in the denominator. Okay. In the numerator is a constant k, whatever it is, times uh, omega n square. Uh, this omega n square is also the constant term in the denominator polynomial. Okay, this is the uh, description of this second order system transfer function. And some explanations here. First, omega n is natural frequency, we call it. Epsilon is called the damping ratio. Is the damping ratio. A little bit uh, about these two concepts. First, uh, what is natural frequency? Natural frequency is uh, the oscillation frequency without any damping. In other words, if damping is zero, 
damping is represented by epsilon. So epsilon, when it is zero, and the oscillation frequency. Oscillation means what? Of course, this oscillation means what? This means the, the transient of the output signal. Remember, in the first order system, we say what? The output never have oscillation. However, the second order system does. Okay. Second order system has oscillation for sure. Well, by for sure, uh, we have a certain uh, damping ratio uh, range uh, for that scenario. Okay, if the damping ratio is very big, the oscillation could be absorbed as well, which means no no oscillation. Okay, if damping ratio is high, however, we we will see. Okay, we will see that. Okay. So more accurate description is the second order system absolutely possibly have their oscillation, okay? The damping ratio is um, explained as this. Mm, we can say that the bigger damping ratio, the quicker the transit will decay, will decay. What does this mean? So you can imagine the bigger damping ratio going to make the, let's make, make it kind of more virilized. This is the output, right? You increase the damping ratio, what's going to happen? make the transient decay quicker. In other words, reaching the steady state quicker, right? So making your, making your uh, oscillation uh, kind of has smaller magnitude. Okay? Decay very faster, very fast. Okay? If you see more example here. And here, the poles. So looking at the given second order system transfer function, what are, what are, what are the poles? How many poles, first of all? How many poles to this system? How uh, many? Two, right? Yeah, definitely two, right? Why is two? Number of the roots of denominator polynomial. So two, two poles. Who are they? Well, by applying, you guys remember this, And nothing special, okay, and nothing special. This is the very basic algebra to second order uh, equation. What is the root? Uh, what is the root? It's just uh, following this root formula, and then we come up with the two posts or say two roots of the denominator polynomial, S sub one and two, and e equals to this. equals to this. Okay. So in terms of omega n and uh, epsilon. Right. Actually, uh, by the way, is there anybody here quite familiar with the uh, Greek letter? So any correction for my pronunciation? Is it epsilon? 
Any correction or no? All right, we're gonna go with it then. Anyways, in terms of the damping ratio and natural frequency, this is 100% correct. I don't need to worry about a pronunciation. And uh, also, according to the damping ratio, we can classify the second order system. Second order system into four categories. Undamped, underdamped, Critically damped and over damped okay first of all the undamped means what obviously very easy to understand there you are not giving any damping damping ratio is zero you're not giving any damping. The damping the ratio is zero. Underdamped means if a damping uh, ratio between zero and one. Critically damp means damping ratio is exactly one. Overdamped is exceeding one. But if you think of this into here, look at the values under the roof of square root. What can we say? And then the system, what kind of poles the second order system have? If someone was zero, right? So what are you going to have? This is what? Zero. It's zero. And then this is what? 91, right? Square root of 91 equals what? Very good. Alex is... Uh, Emetery, right? Emetery number. So you're going to have two imaginary poles. In other words, the real part, which is this, is equal to zero, right? And this one is zero. And then you don't have any uh, anything left here. And, there, and then inside of the square root is a negative one. You're going to come up with a J, right? Come up with a J. Well, I received, I just received the correction from the, uh, from Noah about the uh, pronunciation of this, this uh, damping ratio is zeta. Okay, okay, it's zeta then. Zeta. Zeta, damping ratio, zeta. Anyways, I, I, I think uh, well, forget it. Zeta is zeta then. Okay. All right, zeta damping ratio. Okay. Uh, zero between zero and one, and one and greater than zero, uh, four categories. When no damping, you can end up with two imaginary poles for the system, and if zeta is between zero and one, what, what, what do you have? How to describe these time, these two poles? Between zero and one, what are we gonna have? Real and imaginary pole. Real and imaginary pole.
And what are what are the relationship between those two poles? You can say what? Two, first of all, two, right? And then conjugate, how about that? To yeah. conjugate complex poles. Here we go. To conjugate complex poles, like uh, phi plus or minus 4j, right? Uh, conjugate poles. And further, critically damping is means the uh, uh, zeta equals 1, and then what do we end up with? The real two, two real numbers? Two identical real numbers. Exactly, two identical real numbers. Okay. Two identical real poles. Okay. And the point is always remember we definitely have two, okay, even though they're same, okay, even though identical, still number two, okay. Number cannot be changed. Okay. Has to be two, okay, has to be two poles. Okay. Uh, for example, when you see this, in the denominator, you're seeing the poles are what? Zero? No. The pole is not zero, but what? Zero and zero. Does it make sense? Very important. Okay, this is very, very important. Okay. One of the uh, multiple choice problems also uh, kind of assess this as well. Okay, if you talk about it uh, very soon. Okay, and last case. The overdamped, overdamped, the zeta is greater than one. And then what do we have? Remaining is two, two what? Two different. Remaining as the real, real poles, but two different real poles, not identical anymore, right? So I have uh, upload the new handouts here. Okay, in the module four, you go to this handout and uh, let's see the damping types here. Download it. Here we go. This is the the damping ratio, which is classifying the second order system into four categories and corresponding pole locations in the uh, complex plane. No damping, well, two imaginary poles. Okay. They are conjugate. Yes, they are conjugate. They're actually conjugate as well. That makes sense. And then, uh, then or damped, you have two conjugate poles. Uh, symmetrical about the real axis. And then, critically damped, identical two poles. And uh, over damped, Two different real poles, okay, pole locations. And I think this is also very helpful. This is a trying to visualize the outputs. So when you see such kind of system, then what it corresponding output for step input look like? No damping means what? Oscillation, right? With constant magnitude. Does it make sense? You're not, it's not decaying. This oscillation is not decaying. Perfect sense, right? Because no damping, right? No damping. And then you have under damped. You do have damping. So the oscillation magnitude gonna shrinking, uh, decay. Okay. However, you still have some oscillation here. This is called under damped. You increase the damping, uh, make it critically damping means what? You're not having any oscillation. The oscillation is gone. No oscillation. You just take take certain amount of time to reach this steady state. It's very close to what? First order system, right? The first type is the overdamped. Overdamped means what? You keep increasing the uh, damping, exceeding unity. And then what are you going to have? Uh, from here, you probably cannot see very clearly, but uh, what was the difference between these two? Can anyone imagine what would be the difference? Doesn't an overdamp potentially draw out longer compared to a cripple or a critically damp? Exactly. 
steady state. Exactly. Okay. It's it's about the time it takes to reach the steady state. You give too much damping. What is the cost? Uh, the benefit is what? The benefits are very easy to see, right? You're you're eliminating the oscillation. That's nice. Uh, more healthy uh, system. However, what's the cost? It takes longer to reach the steady state. Of course, it's something bad. It's, it's the too slow. The system will become slow, responding too slow. Okay, and so there's no free lunch. You increase the damping. Okay, you're uh, reducing the oscillation. However, the, the the time for the system to reach steady state is longer. That's bad. Okay, so you can, from this virilize the output signal uh, step response, you can kind of also feel or better understand the concept of damping. Okay. Damping is like what? It's like a squeezing, right? How much squeezing you apply onto your output. More squeezing, more pressure you put on it, less what? Less transient oscillation. And therefore more what? Stable. How about that? However, what's the cost? Your, your, your transient is very long, it's slow, it's very slow, your system is slow. So you can imagine in future design, you're you're looking for a what? Balance or say trade-off, right? Okay. You're looking for a decent trade-off rather than rather than maximizing one of the specification by sacrificing completely the other. No, you, you can't do that. So the uh, one of the handouts we have, okay. and the four categories. Now this part obviously uh, won't be surprised that somehow going to be assessed by multiple choice. Okay, in the next exam. Okay. 